So I've got a really uh, interesting topic today that I want to talk about, which is praying effectively. And it's uh, around from the scriptures in James, where it says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The outcome from today is about how to execute prayers with God effort rather than self effort. Now, this is really important. I don't know if you were anything like me, but um, in, in the time that I, I was growing up in the church, um, every time there was a problem, I took to fasting and praying to sort the problem out. And there would be long times of fasting prayer. It would sort problems out, but then they'd start again. And it would be never-ending ups and downs. I came to realize uh, one day, just a few years ago, um, that fasting and prayer is not uh, required for these sort of things. Fasting and prayer is actually about how we change the, uh, the, the belief system in us and the intimacy, it's spending time intimately with God. And there's scripture around that one of these days I'll talk about that scripture that has been wrongly used, that if you want to see this, this thing, this kind leave, you need to do it with fasting and prayer. Jesus was not talking about the demons there, he was actually talking about our unbelief. And so um, there's a challenge here of, uh, that began, I began to go through of how do I actually pray effectively. And so I began to see this revelation in the scripture in, in James chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. And, um, you know, if someone wants to unmute and read the scripture, it's on the screen or you can grab your Bible and read it. Uh, love to, you know, for us to interact together and there'll be some questions and, and time for questions and clarity as well. But could someone just unmute and either read from the screen or from their Bible, the scripture? Elijah, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that, he, that, that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Amen. So it says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly. And then after that, verse 19 says, the fervent, earnest prayer of a righteous man avails much. And then it says he prayed again. And, I, and, and it's interesting, there's nothing mistaken in the Bible. I want you to know that. I love reading the Word of God because you get answers to anything and everything. And one of the things we want to continuously speak on in this atmosphere of learning is, um, I come from an engineering background, but I also have a very uh, musical background. And so these two sides of the brain for me, one is a logical thing. If God says it, it has to be done, the principles work. And the other one is the emotional thing of um, the feelings behind God wanting to do stuff around for us because he loves us. And, and um, the, But the scriptural side of things is so important that that logic of if it's in the Bible and I apply it, it has to work. Amen. And you can take that to town. You don't have to feel, is, he, is God wanting to heal or does God want to set free or does God want to give an answer? And so we want to talk about how we can effectively see God, um, uh, give, how we can effectively see answers, sorry, through prayer. But there's a difference between earnest prayer and praying again. There's these two different words. And so um, it, it, the, James has this story, the Holy Spirit through, through James speaks about the story of a man called Elijah. And Elijah, it says, was a man with a nature like ours. Could someone just unmute and tell me, a few of you, what, what, when you think of Elijah, what do you think about him? What is Elijah to you? Anyone have any thoughts on, on Elijah? I think Elijah was just a prophet and a, a human like us. So Elijah was a prophet, so we think of him as a prophet, yeah, and human like us, all right. What else? Who else, when they think of Elijah, what do they think about? What comes to your mind when you think about Elijah? Well, when I think of Elijah, I don't think of him just as a prophet. He's one of the two that actually did not die, right? He got uh, taken up into heaven. So so for him, them to say that he was a, a nature just like us, it's not speaking to what he did so much, but it's realizing that, he, yes, he, under God, he developed somehow so that he was this huge man of God that uh, I just, yeah. And so I'm not thinking of him so much as like me, but I know he is. And so that's comforting. I know I'm yeah. like him, but yeah. Yeah, you know, Don, you, you hit the nail on the head, and I want you guys to still keep thinking about what did Elijah do, because 
there's these two aspects of the, of this of what the Holy Spirit is saying here in the book of James. He's just like us, but then, man, when you look at the stories of Elijah, he's more than just like us. It's like this guy was, and like you said, he never tasted death. He was one of he's one of two that will come back as witnesses. He, um, you know, as Mercy said right now, man of powerful prayer, right? Um, but then it says that we're like that. You know, it's like this. Hang on, I can be like that. Or is it saying that Elijah in the midst of doing all of this stuff was a man just like us? Either way, there's a truth in both these sides. And you're absolutely right. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. He's not just, but, he, but yet, the Bible is saying he was a man like us. And that's an interesting thought. Um, what do others say about Elijah? Anyone remember how many miracles he did? Or, or even one or two of the miracles he did? There were some funny ones he did too, which, <laughs> which I thought were funny anyway. Um, any, anyone have a thought and, and can remember some of the miracles? Um, so sometimes I get, uh, you know, mixed up between Elisha and Elijah. But yeah. was the Elijah the, the one that um, the guy lost his axe head in the river and he, he called it up? Or is that Elisha? That was, I believe, Elisha from memory. Oh, okay. But Elijah yeah. did do the, um, the oil that never ran out for the widow. Yes. I, yes, I believe so. The one that yeah. comes to my mind with Elijah was um, calling fire from heaven. Wasn't that Elijah? When, when, yeah. when the soldiers kept coming and he said, if I'm, you know, my Elijah, man of God or something, I said, if I'm a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume me. And it kept coming. And these soldiers were so scared because the king kept telling them to go get Elijah. And, and they were just petrified of, of this man, the authority that he commanded. So I kind of remember that. So, yeah. Anyone remember the, the, the famous... Yeah, you know? uh, um, Called the prophets of Baal and yeah. going up against them on a, on a, what was that that mountain? Um, yeah, Mount Carmel. Carmel, yeah, Mount Carmel, which is really a range. I actually stood in that spot, and you can see where where it made such big uh, a big difference from the Brook of Kidron on up and stuff like that. But yeah, that was very powerful. He took on he took on the other guys. Four hundred, I think it was four hundred. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, of of the um, of the prophets Prophet. of Baal, plus yeah. Jezebel, and he poured water on the on the offering, and commanded fire to come down from from heaven. Right. I think he seemed yeah. like fire. He had this knack with fire, um, and yet the Bible says, and you know, the, the, I mean, I'm, I'm, why I'm telling you guys to think about this is to think about who Elijah is, and yet the Bible says he's a man just like us, and with a nature like us, and a nature means. His thinking and capacity, we have that same nature. And that's quite exciting because what it's trying to say is we actually can, can do the similar thing as him if we would be willing to. And then it says he did two things. He, he prayed in two different styles. He prayed earnestly and he prayed again. And so I go, okay, which is which? And so we can kind of get, kind of get an idea of the story of effect, praying effectively through 1 Kings chapter 17 and 18. See that the Bible always comments on itself, and that's what I love. I don't need a commenter to tell me about a scripture because the Bible comments on itself. So how do I now understand it? Because the goal is praying effectively, right? And ever since I started understanding this, this made such a big difference. When I can pray earnestly, I actually can see effective prayers that are God's effort, not my self-effort. And you'll be surprised at the answer that you may not have seen. It was hidden in plain sight, as we often say, treasure hidden in plain sight. I've heard pastors preach on this and get it wrong because we've so been in, indoctrinated with what we think earnest prayer is. So let's look at the two scriptures, and I've got it up here for your benefit. Um, is in, in, in the First Kings chapter 17, verse 1, would someone be willing to just uh, unmute and read? And it's really great just having us as a body of Christ reading together and understanding. So there's... First Kings chapter 17, verse 1, where the story in James is being referring to, and then we'll read chapter 18 in a minute. I'm reading, so, I'm reading in read. King James. Yep. And Elijah the Shishabite, who was, the, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these, these years 
but according to my word. Yeah, that's it. That was the prayer, one of the prayers that James refers to, inspired by the Holy Spirit. This is the other prayer, a bit longer. 1 Kings chapter 18. Could I get someone else to read? And it's on the screen if you want to just read from the screen. But could I get someone else to unmute and read that? You guys are all shy today. <laughs> 1 Kings 18, 41 to 45. Yes, please. Thanks, Mercy. Okay. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up it and drink for there is the sound of abundance of rain so ahab went up to it and drink and elijah went up to the top of Cana. then he bowed out to the ground underground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant go up now look to what I see so he went up and looked and said there is nothing and seven times he said go again then it came to pass the seventh time and he said there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea he so he said Go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the sea. Now it happened in the sky came black clouds and wind. And there was a heavy rain, so Ahab rode away. Amen. So there's two prayers that took place between a three and a half year period. The Holy Spirit in the in the scripture before uh, tells us that one is praying earnestly and the other one is praying again now which one would you think having a look at these two is earnest prayer anyone have a gander which one is earnest prayer the second one the second one is earnest prayer all right wow. does everyone agree with that you think is the first one are you are you suddenly being unsure now <laughs> Yeah, by James, it says the first one is the earnest prayer. That's it. Isn't that interesting, Tony? And and the Bible doesn't get this wrong. Now, we've preached, I have preached this for years, that I've taught that, that the second one was earnest prayer. Because we were, we were taught this, and growing up in Africa, man, we will say, no, we have to pray and pray and pray and pray and put our heads between our knees and we pray and we go out and we check and we come back again and we go out and check. And the, 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 James calls that self-effort. He just says he prayed again. And then he calls this phenomena of, of, of Elijah just going up to the king and, and pointing basically and saying, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, surely there shall be ne neither dew or rain these years. Like, he didn't even pray to God. He just spoke, and it happened. And James calls it praying earnestly. So this is interesting. And, 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 and if you get the revelation of this, and it's all right if you don't, but if you get the revelation of this, it's really exciting. And if you don't, then... Just work on it till you get the revelation because just see what you think as, I, as we present this. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you because it'll change your prayer life. So here's what James considers is what we call effective prayer or earnest prayer. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. What was that prayer? And Elijah the Tishabite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, said, didn't say to God. And, and it's funny when I speak to pastors on this, they go, oh, but maybe he, he did pray beforehand. I go, if it's not in the scriptures, it's not conclusive. I can't conclude that he prayed before he came here. All I know is that God said, go tell, go, go do this. And, and God, and he went to Ahab and he said, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. And guess what happened? It stopped raining for three and a half years. Then God tells uh, uh, Elijah, go tell the king that there'll be an abundance of rain. And, and Elijah goes, and what does Elijah do? Rather than just going telling him, he goes up to the mountain to pray about it. <laughs> right. So here's, here's my four steps of observation. Effective prayer is short. It's directional to the situation. It's in the presence of God, and it's a declaration, not a begging. 
And there's scripture around this, but if you can get that last thing that I've just put up there, and you can start speaking to situations, because Jesus said that, whatever you say to the mountain, not to me, whatever you say to the mountain, if you believe and do not doubt in your heart, you shall receive it. Amen? And, and so I, I want to give you just a few testimonies of this, but, but one of them when I, was in, when I was just seeing Papa Luke today was I was just remembering when Papa Luke and I and, and my wife Gertrude and another pastor called Pastor Holiness from Uganda, um, we, went, uh, we went in about 2014 to um, 12 nations. We, we had organized to go to 12. I think we ended up going to 10. 12 nations in 40 days from South Africa up to Kenya. And there was about... 10 nations then and we went to go to two others but that got cancelled and it was interesting that um we were we, we, we tracked all the way up back from south africa up to kenya we got to uganda which is the second last nation we dropped off past the holiness and then we got to kenya we dropped off my wife uh, gertrude because at that time she hadn't come to australia and and we're sitting in kenya and now we have to fly back down to south africa papa luke and i so we can get back to australia and we'd already got our return trip ticket from Australia to South Africa, but we didn't have a ticket from Kenya down to Africa. You've got to understand we were going by faith in, in all of this. We're just obedient to God's voice. And each time we went, every two days we were in a different nation. And we had an adventure plus. But anyway, I remember walking into Papa Luke's room. He was at my, my, my dad-in-law's house, and um, who I call dad. And I remember walking into his room and saying, um, we, we don't have enough money yet to get back. And we had to go to Nairobi, and I said, we don't have money to buy a ticket, and we had to travel the next day. And um, I don't know if my wife remembers this, but and, and Papa Luke, I don't know if you remember this, but you didn't know my reaction. So I, I opened his door, I knocked on his door, and I said, Papa Luke, we, we don't have anything. We're, we're zilch, we're just gone. We have no money to travel from, from, from Kenya, uh, and we can't take a bus, it'll take too long. And he just looked at me and he went, all right. And he just went back doing what he was doing. He was looking at something on his phone and he just, and I went, and I, and I went out and went, what? I mean, now I know he was just, he was praying effectively. But I was a little bit annoyed. <laughs> I don't think I ever told him that. And I was like, what? Is that all? That's it? And, and I go out and I'm pacing a little bit. And then we traveled that day to, to uh, eight hours to Nairobi, which is the capital of, of Kenya. And then we have a conference to do that morning. And that night, we have to, we have to head off to South Africa. If we don't, we, we miss our flight back to Australia and more expenses. Anyway, so on the, on the eight-hour journey to Nairobi, I'm thinking through this. And I begin to understand, okay, God's got this. He would have taught God us to come all this way and be in mirac miraculous provision right through and then get us stuck right there. So I just, Father, thank you. You've got this. Sort it out. And so I settled my, my heart on it, turned to Papa Luke, and he's like, it's all good. <laughs> you know, that's just basically it. So we went for, our, for the conference, and we had a pastor's conference on business. And so we knew all the pastors that were poor, they couldn't help us, because um, that's just the nature of church. Um, and so we went and told them our situation as an example. And we said, we've actually got to fly this evening by midnight tonight. Uh, we've got to fly to South Africa to catch our plane back to Australia, and we have nothing in the account. But as we teach you finances and walking by faith, we're, gonna, we're, we're saying that we will have a ticket back. That is done. So we taught. It was a four-hour teaching. I taught for two hours. Papa Luke taught for two hours. As I finished teaching, I went back and sat down. Papa Luke got up to teach, and I get checked my account. I just log into my account, bank account, and there's exact money in my bank account to buy the tickets for both of us. And I'm like... You know, I'm a little bit excited because I'm just starting to learn these things. I'm waving frantically for people to look and say, we got the money for the ticket. I mean, that place went wild because they're just like, wow, it's just that? Like you didn't fast, you didn't pray, you didn't jump up and down, cast out demons, command things to go, tell anyone. We told nobody. They were the only ones who knew because we knew they couldn't provide for us. And so it's that, that ability and over and over again, sickness, disease that have come into our home, in the past, I've been taught that I have to fast, pray, I have to plead the blood, all of these things. And I've changed all of that to recognizing James tells us something in the Bible and it does me well to listen. And it's a God dependency, not an, a self-effort. Because I tell you what, if I told you how many times that I've prayed on my knees and fasted and got answers, what am I doing? I'm producing qualifications, like I often say. 
which means that you either qualify above me or, or under me to get an answer, and that's self-effort, right? And if you now look at that in the light of that, Elijah did that. He went and put his face between the knees and he produced a qualification that a lot of ministers even till today and a lot of believers even to today continue to do. I mean, I talk to people on the internet, on the phone, and they'll say, oh, I just need to get to fasting and praying to get this answer. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, because there's such a situation here and I need to get an effective answer. And I'm going, there's effective prayer. Effective prayer gives you answers. What did Elijah do? He went and pointed his finger at the problem and said, there will be no rain as I stand in the presence of God. Amen. And I want to just encourage you and say, can we be willing to do that? Because that's what the word says. Did Jesus do this? Because again, anything in the old covenant has a pointing to the new covenant if it hasn't been upgraded. Because I often say after the cross, stuff has been upgraded. But this effective prayer James talks about and looks back. So let's look at what Jesus did. Many examples, but here's one. Mark chapter 5, verses 38 to 42. Can someone read that for me? Unmute and read. It would be great if someone who hasn't read yet can just contribute. That will be awesome. It's on the screen or from your Bible. Mark chapter 5, 38 to 42. And if no one dares, I can see Judith. She's about to just jump in and say, because she loves God's word. <laughs> who feels like reading? I'm hearing a cock crow, and that means Kenya's on. <laughs> Could someone read that? Come on, don't be bashful. When we read the word, it produces in us. Okay, I'll read it. I'll read it. <laughs> Michelle. No pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, no pressure at all. Um, then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. Now, is that effective prayer, or is that praying again? You know, what, what do you guys reckon? That's, this is a Jesus thing. Effective prayer, fervent prayer, or just praying again? Yeah, fervent prayer. Amen. What, what, was the, what were the four steps? It was short, right? He didn't go in and pray over and over and over and over again to try and get results. It's directional to the situation. He went to the situation, he pointed at that situation and he said, little girl, I say to you, arise. Notice he did not speak to God. He was in the presence of God, amen? He was in the presence of God. He knew the power that followed in him, just like Elijah knew. And before you say, well, I don't have that power, I'm only human. That's why James says Elijah was a prophet, was a man just like you. Isn't that interesting? So we, we, have, no, we have no choice but to say, God, your effort, not our effort. And he declared and didn't beg. How often do we beg for situations to come right rather than declaring? Amen. Right. And so um, we've got an example of Jesus. There are many, many examples. I've just taken two today. So I want to just talk through something, some a little exercise for you guys. Recall a time when you prayed for a major situation to change in your life. Can you remember how you prayed? I want you just to think about that. Did you pray effectively? Did you pray um, again where you just kept, you know, begging God Lord, are you not listening? Are you not hearing? Uh, please sort this out, right? And it's all right because God loves us in those situations, but we need to grow up. As, as, as James says, the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man. Are we righteous? Yeah, absolutely. How? In Christ, not in ourselves. If you can think of a time you prayed for a major situation to change in your life, and if you can think of how you prayed, whichever way you prayed, can you pop a one into the in the chat box because we've got a few of us here so we won't get through if we asked everyone but if you can recall a time if anyone can recall a time yeah michelle you can that's great anyone else can recall a time you just prayed for a major situation in your life 
and how you prayed. You know, there's no one prayer for situations in the life. I can put lots of ones. There's always major situations. Yeah, thank you, Andrew and Rubika and Don. Yeah. And you might be praying through a major situation right now and for, for a situation. I want to tell you that when my wife and I began to recognize and understand this, you know, <laughs> Richard, uh, 1,111 Q times. All right. I, I think that Q is just, I can see on my, on my keyboard, the, the other Q is just below the one. So, <laughs> Tony, we got a one there. Thank you, Tony and Tony. Yeah. Um, what a, you know, we all have major situations. How did we pray? And if we can alter this today and start to look at the Word of God, we're going to see some amazing changes that can take place. And so um, here's my next thought. Was it a begging prayer? I want you to think about that major situation. Was it a begging prayer? Example, Jesus, please solve this problem in my life. Okay. And, and I appreciate some of you are being honest to say, yeah, yeah. I can tell you so many times, you know, I beg God, take this away from me. You know, take this away from me. It's too hard. And, and you know, unfortunately, that's a slave's attitude towards the situation because a slave begs. And we don't know it, but now that we know it, we, can't, we have, can't, shouldn't go back to it. Right? But because begging prayers um, don't let us walk in the authority that Jesus has already given us. Amen? All right? And so, you know, it's like some of my kids, as they get older, um, they do the funniest things. They come up to me and go, Dad, like my 15-year-old would come to me and go, Dad, can I go take a shower? And I go... Yeah, you don't have to ask me anymore. Uh, do you need me to come and turn the taps on for you? I mean, aren't you old enough to do that? And then they laugh at me and go, Dad, come on. And I go, you don't have to ask permission for that. Like, go take a shower. Just let me know. So I, if I'm looking for you, I know where you are, right? And so um, w was that prayer begging prayer rather than a different uh, a prayer of effectiveness? Was it a complaining prayer? Have you ever prayed this prayer before? Oh God, why is this always happening to me? What have I done wrong? You know, why do bad things happen to good people? What mistake have I made? Oh me, oh my. You know, has anyone prayed that prayer? That's actually an orphan's attitude prayer. Maybe you haven't prayed it, maybe you've thought it. God doesn't like me. He's got favorites and it's not me. See, even in, the, in John, it says the one, the disciple who, who, who God loved more. It doesn't say that, it just says the disciple whom God loved because he understood love. He understood what love was, right? God doesn't have favorites. You're all his favorites. Amen? But have we done a complaining prayer? Even this COVID time, I hear a lot of people saying, oh God, please heal COVID. I go, he ain't going to do, he can't do it even if he wants to because he's released you with authority to speak into, your situa into the COVID situation. He said the earth, the heavens belong to God and the earth belong, he has given to man. And he said he's given us to have dominion over the earth. Oh me or oh my? Or was it a thanksgiving and declaration prayer? Like, for example, saying, Father, thank you for my inheritance. All things work together for good for you, together for your good. Now I speak to the situation and command. That's what a son's attitude is. And it's okay if you've had the other two. I, I have for so long, I had those situations. Um, I recall when we used to have home meetings years and years ago uh, in my home, I got taught that every time people leave the home, I have to bleed the blood around the home. Otherwise, my family will be attacked. So I'd bleed the blood. I'd put oil like a cross everywhere. I'd cast out all the demons. And it was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of hard work. I'd, I'd pray, Jesus, come and put your blood. And I'd be complaining. And I'd be making uh, bargains. And I'd be begging God. Now I just go, praise God for, 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 the, for the home churches that we have. Because, because the atmosphere changes every time a sun shows up, Romans 8, 19. You know, it says that the earth is groaning, waiting for the appearance of the sons of God. So <clears throat> this is just an exercise for you to think about how you pray. It's what we call auditing our prayers. Because as you audit your prayers, you can begin to make a difference in them. How should our prayers be? Short, directional, in His presence, de declaring and not begging. <clears throat> and we can't look at the past and say, well, how did that go for you? Like, don't forget, Elijah, when he put his head between his knees and prayed seven times, that would have taken him a fair bit of time. The answer still came. So you can pray begging and, and, and complaining prayers, and you could get an answer. But it's such a lot of effort. And I don't know about you, 
But if you ever witnessed or heard a testimony of someone whose prayers were answered and they tell you how they did it and you feel condemned like, man, this person is so righteous. They're so amazing. Look at what God has done for them, right? I don't know if anyone's ever been like that. I often used to feel that way, that I was never good enough to get up to that place. I needed to spend more time with God to understand. And it's not your efforts, guys. It's what Christ did on the cross. Amen. Like today when we prayed over Nigeria and as our brother Nathan talked about, other countries are going through similar sort of things. And I love what he said. He said, you know, we might look at the, the <clears throat> a people group and a religious group that is causing a problem. Uh, we're not against them. We understand the situation, but we know the love of Christ is powerful. And we begin to speak that rather than begging God to change the situation. And that's really important. You know? <clears throat> Here's another question. Write down three situations, a little exercise, I should say. Three situations you are needing an answer for. I want you to write that down on your phone, or if you want to share it with us, you're welcome to share it. But, but why? Because we're going to actually pray effectively towards them and see a change. I remember a time that I had um, just a few weeks ago, <clears throat> like... I remember a time when I used to get sick, I would spend hours and hours just praying over my body to get well. And it was not effective prayer. It was, it was not earnest prayer. It was this repetitive praying again prayer. <clears throat> and I get relief after a while. But when I understood what I'm teaching you today, um, I just remember a few weeks ago after teaching on the healing <clears throat> that we were doing, the healing um, um, seminar on the Saturdays. <clears throat> after the first one, we saw so many people getting healed even in the environment. I went to sleep that night, and at about 3 in the morning, I woke up. And those of you that know me, I, I'm not deterred by demonic activity or, or visitations or anything like that. I began to sudden. I woke up at about 3, and I just was, I started coughing incessantly. <clears throat> and there was like this itching in the back of my throat. And this voice just came into my mind and just took over my whole thoughts for about, I think it was about 30 seconds, and said, you've got COVID. Because we'd just been talking about divine healing and... All of that stuff doesn't affect us. And I, I've never coughed that way. And it was just like this cough and I couldn't stop coughing. And, and for 30 seconds, it might seem like a little time, but when you're sleeping and you're woken up by this and you have this flood of thoughts in, it's like, whoa, where did that come from? But because I've understood this praying effectively, it only lasted 30 seconds. I was like, whoa, stop buying, stop buying advertising time in my mind. I haven't given you permission to do that. Flick off just got it off. I'm flicking the channel. I'm changing that. And then I went back to sleep. Since then, I've had perfectly, perfect health, absolutely no problem. Right? What if I'd entertain the thought? You see? And sometimes we can entertain things and get fearful because the level of our belief <clears throat> is lower than the level of our faith. And the belief is lower than the level of our fear. And it's fear and anxiety that can take over. So I, I hope you've written down three situations you're needing an answer for, because we're going to believe God for it today. <clears throat> Thank you for those who are sharing it. Using a son's attitude toward the situation, we're going to pray effectively towards seeing the situation change. So let's take one of the, one of the examples that someone might have shared, and um, you know, thank you for those who have. <clears throat> yeah, the, the third element is in the presence of God, Andrew. So, um, Michelle, my core prayer is for my son to learn to read and write and to cope at school, for him to be at standard for his age and not, at year, uh, not years and years behind. Absolutely. So how would we pray effectively? And that's a great prayer. And thank you for, for sharing it with us. Um, oh, sorry, Andrew, you actually asked a question on this. Um, how do we come into the presence of God? What do we need to do? Love that question. I'm going to answer that in a minute um, or in a few minutes. So... Uh, Michelle's written this as a prayer. Let's use this as an example. Is that okay, Michelle? Can we use this as an example? Yeah. Awesome. So using a son's attitude towards the situation, we're going to pray effectively towards seeing the situation change. The key to sonship prayer starts with belief and continues with right attitude. Well, what does that mean? Well, whatever prayer we pray, we're going to believe what the Bible says in Isaiah, that my word will go forth and will not come back empty 
until it has completed everything that it was sent out to accomplish. Right? And so the key is what I say, what I believe, what I speak. And then every time I'm confronted by the situation, what my attitude is towards it. Okay? So that's the start of, and you can apply this to anyone today. So Matthew 21, 22 says, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Okay? And so we're, we're believing for your son, Nick. And we're going to believe as a church today and as a body today. And so the prayer <clears throat> would be just like we were talking about before in what we've seen so far in the scriptures. It's going to be short. It's directional to the situation. It's in the presence of God and it's a declaring, not a begging. So here's how we're going to pray. And, and if, you're, if you feel I need to be religious, I'm happy to close my eyes and, and, and stretch my hand out. Um, but those who hang around me know that, you know, we've just seen how... How, how, how did Elijah pray? Stuck his finger at the problem and said, hey, Ahab, there won't be rain as, until I say it, according to my word. Boom. What did Jesus do? Child's not dead. Come on, let's get in there. Takes child. Get up. Right? So here's how we're going to handle the situation. We're going to say, Nick, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you're going to be, your, your body, your mind, your soul is in perfect divine order now. In Jesus name father we thank you right now and, and I hope you guys if you're agreeing with me just I'm gonna ask you to stretch your hand out not because we need that religious belief but just because it's a nice sign to know and I want Michelle to know that we're all in agreement today okay we're agreeing with you on this but we're gonna do it in an effective way and so father we just thank you that he that right now for Nick and Nick we just speak over your mind you'll be at the perfect learning level you will come up to the standard you're required to learn we, we 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 command every word that has been spoken of over you that has been a distraction and negative word to be broken off without effect today but what we do instead is begin to speak that you are a man called after god's heart that you are a boy that will grow up to be one who will be responsible for the things of heaven and things of heaven upon this earth that you will see things beyond others and you will have an emotion that understands uh, people even before they understand themselves, that you would be a seer in the spirit and you would, and you would be a seer that would see and a, and a prophet that would speak and a doer that would do and many will be touched. And we speak that destiny upon your life because that is a God destiny today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whew, that's good. That's good stuff. Now we've spoken it and so... Even if we don't see fully the manifestation of it, every time you see Nick, you just begin to remember what we've spoken because this is what dad says about him. And keep asking dad, dad, what do you say about my son? And I do that often with my kids, especially when they get older and they sometimes make decisions that I might not fully like. I go, I remember what God has said about you. And my attitude changes to that and I rejoice in that, amen? And I'm not pretending the other situation isn't there, but I'm saying in spite of that situation, I'm speaking life. And life, and, and I'm going to have this attitude that is going to be of one of gratitude. Father, thank you. And as you do that, this is, this is a great lesson to learn because we start seeing change. You'll be amazed. And you'll actually start to appreciate um, things in your life. Like in, in, for Michelle's situation, you'll start to appreciate Nick. And you'll start to see amazing things that Nick does and go, oh my gosh, this is so good. This is like, this is heaven. And, and I actually think that that's going to happen first. And then there's going to be this huge acceleration that's going to take place in all of this. But it's an attitude in, in, in where it moves forward in, which is an excitement. Michelle, are you sensing anything as you pray? Because there was such a release of power, presence of God today when, we, when we spoke that. What are you sensing? Um, I felt the build up before you started praying. It started yeah. in my stomach. Um, so it was quite powerful. But so you're saying that I just have to claim it over him every day now. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not a claiming out of fear. It's just, Father, thank you. Your word has been sent forth. And I know, and rather than speaking of what shouldn't be, begin to speak what is. Yeah. Because sometimes we want to stop things, but instead we want to just um, speak over. You know, we want to stop the negative, but we, we, we don't replace it with what it is meant to be. And, and so when we were praying right now, what I just sensed over him is that he is a man that who, who will 
who will steward well and handle well the presence of God. He will understand the emotions of others before they understand others. Start speaking those things into his life and seeing it manifest. And as you do, you, you'll see the standard that he comes up to in a powerful way. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. I would love to say. Yeah. Thank you. And we're together with you on this. And so the attitude now is, hey, we've spoken about this. So when if the enemy comes and knocks and goes, ain't happening, um, you need to pray harder, it's not if you guys go flick off. Thank you, Father, for what you've promised. And then I love what that man in the Bible said that I often say when it's too much for my belief. I go, I believe, help my unbelief. Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. In other words, I have faith for this and I believe because I have an environment that is teaching me from the word of God that this is true. But help my unbelief and then God will do that. That's our place of humility in knowing that we are still getting there in certain circumstances in our life. Amen. I remember a time when I was told, diagnosed, and I was saying that earlier today, with, uh, with sm sports-induced asthma. I don't know if anyone's heard of that. I'd never heard that you could get asthma from sports. Anyway, I used to run, run around the field with my friend, and every time I finished running, I was about 17, I think, years of age, I'd, I'd uh, wheeze. And the doctor said, when I went to see him, you've got sports-induced asthma, gave me a puffer, and I tried it, and was like, well, that is so bitter. And I just made a decision, I'm not going to believe that anymore. And I did believe that. And it was an easy demon to tackle. It just got off me. Um, when I say easy, I just had a level of belief for it. And uh, since that day till today, which has been over 20, 27, 37, for nearly, nearly 30 years, I've not had any sports-induced asthma. I do not have asthma whatsoever, but I do not have any problem. We don't have any wheezes, never had any wheezes when I do exercises. How awesome is God? So just an encouragement. Um, I was a guy who fe fell sick very often, three, four times a year. And when I, since I was a kid, four, five years of age, and my mom said I'd get such high temperature that I could die. Um, and when we were in Nigeria for the first few years of our life, she would just put Odiclon. I don't know if anyone's heard of Odiclon. My uh, sister might remember it. And um, just put it on my, my body just to, uh, with a cloth to try and reduce the heat and, and just pray. Um, and, and then when I got to Australia, I would get sick at least two to three times a year. And I declared it over myself. I get sick two to three times a year. And when I do get sick, I really get sick. And so two to three times a year, then it went down to once a year. I would get really, really, really sick. And I would just have huge temperatures, sit in bed, headaches, have to stay in bed. And one day I just sat up and I went, hmm, what am I doing? Why am I accepting this? And I went, effective prayer. I will not have it anymore in Jesus' name. And since that time, it tried to knock on the next year. And I said, no, I will not have it. And so when I started getting symptoms, I began to say, I remember, Father, what you've promised me, that healing is my portion. And then I said to the, to the, the sickness, I said to the, the demons, I said, if you keep trying to affect my body, I'm going to go find the next person who's sick. I'm going to pray for them in the name of Jesus. I'm going to find the next person who needs to know Jesus, and I'm going to bring them to the Lord. And I went, went to the gym, and I started preaching to people there. And, and that thing just left. And every time I tried to come back over a three-month period, I would do the same thing. I'd, I'd just go, I'm tired of you, and I'm going to go do this instead. And I'd go do God's purpose. And then since that time to now, it's been over 10 years. I've never, I've never had that sickness. Uh, so just to encourage you guys that this is possible, but it is a journey of li living, st stepping up our belief. And so when we feel like we don't have belief, say, Father, um, Thank you, I believe, help my unbelief. But otherwise, speak to the situation. Amen. Uh, Judith has a question, I, uh, a comment. I have a daughter in Bahrain who needs prayers. As she went to work, there was a domestic, as a domestic worker, her boss slapped her because she called her, but she didn't hear her because she was on the phone. So she called the agency and the police, and now she, has arrest, she was arrested now in prison. God, uh, God to intervene, she slapped her back. Um, okay. Um, so what, what prayer do we need, uh, Judith, for this? What, what are we needing God to do here? We, we can't get her on phone. And uh, also, uh, we can't get her on phone. And uh, she can't, uh, we can't uh, get any communication. So we wanted God to intervene so that she can be released and uh, go back and... Uh, uh, continue with our life if uh, the, 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 her boss to 
if you can you can take her back better. So you want to re-establish communication and then for her to be able to go back to her employment. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so let's believe God for that. So a few days ago, for those who are on one of our group chats, we actually have four group chats. In one of our group chats, which is called Intimacy 819, um, <clears throat> there was uh, Daphne who was on one of our leaders in training, and she wrote... A kind of a similar, uh, similar but different situation about communication, where she couldn't get in touch with her brother-in-law and his wife. They had gone on a yacht in somewhere in uh, Malaysia, and they had lost communication with them for the last week. And so she said, we don't know where they are, what's wrong, if anything's gone wrong, we're not sure, would you pray? So we just prayed an effective prayer like this. We literally typed it up on Intimacy 819. Daphne is in Australia. Of a family, um, this particular brother is in a different, it, it was somewhere around the Malaysia, Malaysia uh, region. So we just spoke that prayer. We said, in, Father, we thank you for, for Daphne's brother and sister-in-law. In the name of Jesus, we command re-establishing of, uh, of, of communication and that, that any weapon formed against them will not prosper. Amen. Uh, within the next day or two, I think, I think it was within 24 hours, she wrote back to us and said that they had re-established communication. Amen. So, so this is how we believe God for situations that can, can change. Um, so let's believe God, guys, together for, uh, for this girl in Bahrain. What's her name, Judith? <clears throat> her name is Sheila. Sheila. Okay. Yes. Well, so we're going to pray for two things. One, for re-communication to be re-established, and two that she will have another place of employment uh, for her to continue in Bahrain, right? Because she needs to provide for her family back in Kenya. Is that, is that in agree? Are we in agreement? Thumbs up if we are. <laughs> All right. Good. Is everyone else here in agreement? Yeah. yeah. Amen. All right. So, yeah, it's good if we just put our hands forward. We don't need to, but it's great to do that as we've reached our hand forward because we're actually saying that we agree and as ambassadors we're praying effective prayers earnest prayers like the word has taught us so father we thank you for sheila in jesus name and right now in the name of jesus we say any weapon formed against sheila has not prospered today we command to be null and void we command communication to be reestablished we speak favor even over the bahrain garment over her and over a situation and we open the doors. We say doors open for her work and her situation today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you right now for this daughter of God, this daughter of heaven, that she would even now see the peace of God upon her life. And we speak peace right now over Sheila in Jesus' name. We speak um, patience right now over Sheila in Jesus' name. We command that that spirit of anger and bitterness would leave right now. The frustration would go in Jesus' name. Right now. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Whew, awesome. Thank you, Father. Just, yeah. um, she was slapped. She was slapped, yes. And so, Lord, we just some, speak yeah. um, heal, the, um, we just um, ask for the healing balm to be mm. poured over that. Um, it, it's like a, I just see the, the mark on her face mm. where she was slapped. Thank you, and there's a sense of deep shame. Mm. Mm. Ooh, we just uh, speak mm. into that area of shame um, that is uh, mm, sitting over her at this time, Lord. We just come against that shame. And we just pour that healing balm into the into the physical area where she was slapped, Lord, and into her mind and her emotions. Um, mm. We just speak against all uh, memories of that. Mm. Of that uh, all, um, uh, it's it's like she's not going to forget it, but the pain mm. of mm. the emotional pain and the physical pain yes. that she endured in Thank that you. those few seconds when she was slapped, Lord. We just speak total healing mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. Amen. I'm not a master. I can't say it in him. But you know, Sasha keeps going back and they keep clearing her. And then they say that there may be a few antibodies left. And so she believed, we believe that she's actually really beginning to know who God is. Mm -hmm. um, and she's asking all of us for prayer. Right. And they're taking another test today to see if there are antibodies. Another test says there may be. So, and it's 
Yeah, absolutely. So Rubika just asked this because she's out over there yonder on another, uh, so she has done her mic off, so you can't hear. But just a prayer request for her, her niece who's in um, uh, Saja, which is near Dubai, and who was uh, diagnosed uh, with a positive for COVID um, some weeks ago. And then now they've taken tests, I think it's about the fourth, third or fourth test, and they keep saying she's okay. And then they say that they found some vir uh, elements of the virus, some traces, so she's got to go back. And the great thing is through this, she doesn't believe in Jesus, but through this, she's been reaching out to all of us as believers and asking for prayer. How awesome is God? Amen. So, right. So she's saying we're wondering if she started to believe and accept Christ. Well, you might as well use that open yes, door and say, Sasha, amen. you need to receive Jesus. Yes. Amen. So we just want to uh, agree with Rubika right now. And and uh, like I said, this is just effective prayer is an agreement together, but it's from what's within us. If, if we don't have that within us, then we keep speaking till we get that agreement uh, in our spirit. But the Holy Spirit is an agreement for effective prayer. Short directional situation in the presence of God, and we declare we don't beg. Now, if you find after you say it, you need to say it again, say it again. That's all right, because you're just building up your ability. So, Father, we just thank you for Sasha today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just speak right now in Jesus' name. We speak over the COVID and we say, COVID, you will leave. Viruses, traces, any trace right now, you will leave in Jesus' name. Loose off now, off of Sasha's body. In Jesus' name, completely. Every symptom leave. Every indicator come to negative today yes, yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we just speak for, uh, for, for the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened mm -hmm. today. That she may know the good, the depth, the love, yes. the, the width of God. Yes. Uh, and, and she may know you yes. in this circumstance. That yes. she will make you her Lord and Savior yes. in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. That's so good. Thank you. God is good in this. Amen. So um, I would just let me answer Andrew's question. I'll open it up to anyone else. Uh, mercy for my dad to be released soon. We're told that he'll be released in April on Martha's Day, but he didn't. And due to COVID, we can't visit him yet. All right. So, Father, we just thank you for mercy and for her dad today. And we speak a release, his release today in Jesus' name. His release today in Jesus' name. Let it be done today. Anything stopping it now, we say, you are null and void and of no effect over mercy's Father. And we speak right now that the gates will be open wide in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every attack, loose off every weapon that is tried to form against this dad and over the family, leave now in Jesus' name. We speak release right now, and we speak fear to leave, and anxiety to leave off the whole family, and we speak right now, um, yeah, just off in the government, the decisions that have to be made, thank you for favor today, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, so awesome. So Andrew, you asked a good question, could you um, just give me more enlightenment on what you were what was going through your mind when you asked me that question? That yeah, I'm just not sure. Like you said, uh, it's effective prayer in, um, would have uh, us in the presence of God. And yeah. uh, I just wasn't sure. Uh, I mean, as Christians, as believers, we're always in the presence of God. But do, do, you, do you say it because we need to um, like uh, evoke a special presence of God for effective prayer or what does it mean to have to be the presence Great of God? Great question. Um, what do you think it means from the scriptures that we've studied so far? Um, what do you feel it would mean in this? When Elijah said, uh, as I stand in the presence of God, uh, there will be no rain according to my word. Did if you look at the scripture beforehand, did Elijah in, evoke anything? No, did, did yeah. he? Did he? No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. 
Right? And then the Bible says that God says he will never leave us nor forsake us, that all authority has been given to us. Mm, mm, and, mm. and so we are always in the presence of God. Yeah, yeah. Like when we get that, we ha the condemnation leaves because there is no condemnation for those who walk by the Spirit and not in the flesh. And so it's sometimes we've thought that we have to get into the presence of God because that's the old covenant mindset. The blood came so that the Holy Spirit could fall. Today's a day of Pentecost. And I don't celebrate it the way pastors and churches and people celebrate that we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to fall again. Oh, me, oh, my. He <laughs> fell and he never, fe he never went back to heaven. There is no scripture yeah, that says he went back to heaven. If you get to visit heaven right now, you'll see the Father and the Son, but you won't see the Holy Spirit there because he's down here. Mm. Right? Which means that he's around us always. Are we willing to believe that? right the whole earth the bible says is full of the glory of god we're not waiting for it that's why when people say we are living in an, a, 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 an evil earth i go yeah there's a lot of sin and and there's lots of consequences of sin storming around here but but the glory of god is here as well and that's a scripture that says where sin abounds grace abounds even more mm -hmm. hallelujah and grace is his presence okay. you know so absolutely you've answered your own question when you said am i always yeah we're the temple of the holy spirit we're in his presence. Okay. Yeah. So we, we need to say that as we are in the presence of God, this phrase, just to, to confirm. You don't need to say it, but if it's going to help your belief, say it. So oh. the words we speak do not change heaven. The words we speak just give us our belief system's authority to say something. Like there is, there are times where I have not had to say anything because I couldn't say something in a situation but I've spoken in my spirit. And as I've spoken it out in my spirit, my thoughts, it's taken place. I've seen, I saw, I remember some years ago that there was a woman in our, in our conference. We had a conference with over 500 people every night. And there was a woman one day that came up for prayer with the visiting speaker that came from PNG. And she was slithering like a snake on the ground and just causing a lot of commotion. And I have learned now that those are all distractions. They're not, they're attention seeking, and we don't want the dignity of people. The kingdom of God, as Papa Luke says, came to, re to restore the dignity of man. And so I'm sitting there going, what do I do? And then I just spoke in my spirit and I said, you will stop right now in Jesus' name. And boom, she just stopped. She lay, she lay just uh, lame, limb on the ground until we got to her and prayed for her. And, and so I've learned that we say things out of our mouth because of the fact that um, we've got to convince our own selves and that's okay. Because, you know, if you believe you will receive, what do you believe? Well, let's start believing it. So yes, if you need to say, as I stand in the presence of God, say it till you believe that you stand in the presence of God. Amen. Like okay. I would always speak over my body, divine health. And, and I had to keep saying it every morning, all the time, invoking it over my body um, until I believed it was that I live in it. But I, it never changed God. It never changed the devil. It just changed my belief. And I had to get rid of my old belief and step into my new belief. And that's why we say Romans, um, Romans uh, was it 12.2, which is this atmosphere 12.2 meetings that we have, is so important because we're not conformed to the world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. You know, and yeah. uh, that's, that's powerful. Amen. So great question. And it's a great question for everyone.